All right, well, Coyote, thank you very much for joining us today. Yep. So uh, uh, you are working with the Air Force on uh, a couple different projects, but most specifically, I wanted to ask you about uh, the, the space-based solar power and what you guys are working on. Tell me, uh, what, what exactly are you guys doing with, uh, with that program? In 2007, I co-led a study while at the National Security Space Office into space-based solar power. This is a concept that's been around for a number of years. Robert Heinlein was talking about space energy being broadcast back to Earth in, back in the 1940s. And the first serious scientific endeavor into that was in the 1960s when a gentleman named Peter Glazier actually did a, a research study and did a design, did a, co a copyright and a patent on the whole concept. And it's really been quite an exciting thought. Um, the interest that the Air Force has had in space-based solar power has to do with one word, security. One of the greatest things that we can do to secure our future is to provide energy security to prevent us from having energy wars at some point in the future. Uh, back in the late 2000s, as, as we took a look into the, the 2035, 2040 time frame, we estimated at that time that we were coming to a peak oil uh, period where the demand for petroleum would outsource, or uh, outpace rather, the actual ability to produce petroleum. We took a look at places like Asia that was modernizing, Africa, which is starting to industrialize as well, and we saw an incredible drain of just the, the petroleum resources of the planet. And as part of our security plans and our strategy was to develop alternative fuels of safe, clean energy, and space-based solar power was one of them that came to the fore. A paper was written by an Air Force officer a few years ago. His name was Michael Hornacek, and he wrote a, a paper called War Without Oil. And it was a very inside the Air Force look at what our strategic situation would be in the mid 1930s, excuse me, 2030s, uh, if we were under a pinch for petroleum. And he recommended in that paper that space based solar power be one of the alternative fuel sources that the Air Force look at, not just for the Air Force, but for the U.S. economy, for the, our allies, and for the world in general. But we started the study online, quite open, and it was the Space Frontier Foundation and the National Space Society and their membership, which gave us the biggest kick and the biggest boost to actually do our study. Uh, at the time, my commander was General Jim Armour. And General Jim Armour, as the, the head of the National Security Space Office, literally said to me, Coyote, you have six months to do this study. I need to have a finished written report, uh, but I've got no budget because it's the middle of the year. Uh, so at that time, I thought to myself, oh great, he wants me to solve the world's energy crisis without a budget. But I really discovered that there's a fabulous network. There is a cloud of space advocates out here in, in the various Space Frontier Foundation, the Space uh, Studies Institute, the National Space uh, Society, that really have an energized, talented pool of people that when I came to them at their conferences and briefed them on the idea of space-based solar power, the enthusiasm and the talent that they brought to the study was second to none. Uh, you could not have paid to have a better study produced with, with a larger pool of experts. And there was a lot of debate and a lot of disagreements. And we had those hosted on a free online blog site. And we did that right in the public. I am so proud of this effort because this is one of the issues that really energized the entire new space movement with people that were doing serious studies into space-based solar power. There have been several companies that have stood up to examine the feasibility of doing space-based solar power, and they deal with a difficult thing. I like to use an analogy. Douglas Adams, who was the great author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, in that book, which came out in the 1970s, he postulated that the answer to life, the universe, and everything was the number 42. And he said that uh, 42 was the answer but we just didn't know what the question was. Well, I like to say that after billions of dollars of research in many different related science and technical fields, after decades of study, we have actually found out what the question is that, answer, that, that, that makes, the question, it makes the answer 42 relevant. And it's simply this. How many square meters of solar panel do you need to put on the surface of the Earth to equal a single square meter of solar panel in outer space? And the answer is 42. This is an independent number that was generated by John Mankins, who uh, was the uh, head of NASA's Fresh Look study that looked into space-based solar power. 
and a gentleman over in England arrived at the same number independently. Uh, his name was Phil Owens, who worked for PowerSat Corporation at the time. It, it's a fascinating ratio. When you stop and think about a single, a single square meter in outer space has all the power potential of 42 square meters on Earth, where does that number come from? Well, when you take a look at uh, the angle of the sun, we, we picked uh, the 45th parallel, which is halfway between the equator and halfway between uh, the pole. You take a look at the sun's super intense strength in outer space, the fact that the sun never sets, the seasons never change, the weather never varies. You see that there's a tremendous potential to super energize a single meter of solar panel in outer space that suddenly becomes comparable, even when you broadcast that power down to Earth, to 42 square meters on the surface. Now here's where business stands. Most all of us, if we uh, took out a small loan, we could afford to buy 42 square meters of solar panel and put on the roof of our houses. But we will have to work together to put up any number of these solar panels into outer space to make them deliver to us the type of energy to make it relevant. And it would be a massive space program, a massive project. But in the end, the business case will be made when you can demonstrate that you can uh, put those meters of solar panel in outer space and deliver the energy to Earth using a sound business case that beats that ratio of one meter in space to 42 on Earth.